So uh, those of you who are here today know that the economic environment we live in can make it tricky, very tricky, uh, to get and to keep your ECM projects on track. Uh, it was tricky before, it's trickier today. The conversation uh, that you are about to witness will provide you with the opportunity to hear how some truly visionary uh, CIOs and other senior level IT executives uh, successfully did that. Uh, they're here today to talk to you about how they went about building executive support, uh, driving end user buy-in, and internally promoting the importance of content management uh, to survive and thrive amidst the unprecedented challenges that we're all facing today. So to help us uh, dig for and uncover those answers, uh, we're delighted to have with us Bob Shimp uh, of Oracle, uh, he, who will moderate today's discussion. So without further hesitation, please join me in welcoming Bob Shimp. Thanks, Tom. Thank you, Tom, uh, and uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us this morning. So we, as uh, Tom mentioned, have a panel of distinguished guests that uh, I'll introduce briefly, and then we'll uh, uh, jump straight into our, uh, our conversation. So uh, thank you, everyone. And I'm going to start with Todd here. I'm going to start by asking you, uh, what kind of impact has ECM had on your organization? OK. Thanks, Bob. I guess uh, to first to start off, you've got to understand a little bit about Vernado for two seconds. We're a real estate investment trust. We buy buildings. We buy companies. Mainly, our assets are our properties. So along with that, we had to come up with some systems to really manage those assets and what goes along with them. Lots of paper, leases, loans, contracts, insurance, the gamut for owning any piece of property. So I guess the biggest impact that we've had is being able to have portability of content as well as um, searchability. So for example, I'm going to do a lot of examples today of how we use products and, and search. If you have a shopping center and there's, you always see the signs out on the highway and someone's got a bigger sign than the other guy, well, every lease stipulates that someone can or cannot have a sign out front. So we used to hire five or six attorneys at a time to read all the leases for a shopping center or for a mall and determine who has rights for a pylon, the sign on the pylon. That would cost anywhere between ten and $15,000 just to find a clause in a lease. So today, everything is full text searchable. Put in a pylon clause, and you'll find it. So we've eliminated all those aspects of it so that searchability is there. The other side is portability, meaning if we're going to dispose of an asset, we have a building in New York, we're going to sell it to another real estate company. All the leases, all the collateral, the loans, the documentation, it all has to go to the new buyer. So it used to be bring in the truckloads of paper, make photocopies of it, and give them the originals, and, and move all the paper. So obviously, this is all portable. So in the content systems that we have, we've developed systems that will let you export all the data, whether it's leases, loans, confidential information, environmental documents, financial documents, to CDs and DVDs, and it becomes portable. I can bet. And uh, Colonel Whitlock, uh, from your perspective, uh, what's the biggest impact that it's had on the Air Force medical system? So uh, similar to Molly and Mike, uh, we're approaching this from more of a knowledge management perspective uh, that, rather than a business process management perspective, although we're also doing some uh, BPM we'll talk about a little bit later. But uh, so the Air Force Medical Service is 10% uh, of the Air Force, but given that the Air Force is a rather large organization, that's still a large organization, $5 billion, uh, 60,000 people, including all the reservists. And so if you are a uh, optometrist or uh, dentist or you may be one of something at a small Air Force clinic in Turkey or Korea, it'd be really nice to connect up and understand how you're supposed to be doing your job in, in the Air Force, not just your clinical duties, but how, it, how that works in the Air Force. And so uh, six years ago, we put an ECM platform into production as a knowledge management application. At the time, it was uh, prol proliferating, proliferating websites all over the place. Let's get them all together into one coherent platform um, and do all the right things with that. So my, it was not my idea. My predecessor I had the wisdom to do that the right way in ECM platform. So now we have industrial strength 
uh, document management. All the web content is actually, are actually Word docs dynamically uh, converted to HTML, so everything is treated as a document, so we put a lot of business process around automated expiration, so we don't have old stuff that stays out there forever. Uh, uh, subscriptions, email subscriptions for new content. Six years ago, that was really cool stuff. Today, you can get that from a certain other software company famous for making a certain operating system. But uh, <laughs> there's, there's you know, pros and cons to how, how you do that, how you think about that, how you do that strategically for an organization, for a large organization. Obviously, you want the scalability built in, so the, you pay a little more up front, you get that software scalability. As we had to worry about a lot of things with this, but software scalability is not one of the things we had to worry about. 